Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello and welcome to The Bistro. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Elena Spinola. You know, April is Financial Literacy Month, and today we're speaking with Yvette Butler, the president of Capital One Investing, to discuss retirement and long-term financial planning. Hello, Yvette. Welcome to The Bistro. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, we are so thrilled to speak with you, especially during Financial Literacy Month, as you have a new survey that's just been released by Capital One that sheds light on some new trends on investing. So we'd love to have you share some of these findings with us today. So that we know it's important for individuals to invest in their financial future and plan for retirement. But tell us, what did your recent financial freedom survey reveal about Americans' confidence and experience and trust when it comes to retirement planning and investing? Well, our financial freedom survey found that less than two-thirds, about 62% of Americans feel confident that they're putting away enough to retire comfortably. And importantly, that was a 10% drop from two years ago. So um, this lack of confidence is is fueled by a lot of different things, Um, a distrust in the markets, uh, a lack of experience, um, a notion that the markets aren't really clear and transparent, and this overall notion that investing is complex and over. Overwhelming. So this has resulted in many prospective investors just sitting it out and sitting on the sidelines and not participating in the markets and really actually missing out even on this recent current market uh, rally. Um, so the good news, though, is our research also found that investors think that digital tools can help them reach their goals. Sure. And many Americans say access to financial advisors and robo-advisors uh, can boost their financial peace of mind. That's great. And uh, I definitely want to dive into that because that seems relatively new, these robo-advisors. But, you know, tell me, how can Americans increase their confidence and and start to actively plan for retirement? So according to your study, they're just not feeling confident. They're less engaged in investing. What can we do to help them increase their confidence? You know, it's really about taking those little baby steps at first and not thinking about being overwhelmed. Uh, So, for example, the little everyday things. So the cup of coffee that you have every day. Um, If you take uh, uh, that step of maybe skipping it every once in a while, you know, that can say add up. It can even add up to $500 over the course of a year. Um, Sitting down and, and writing a budget. Really those things that can make you feel in control. Another thing that you can do is there are a lot of tools on various websites like our own Capital One Investing that has um, making investing automatic. They're called automatic investing plans. And it really is this notion of setting it and forgetting it where you save maybe $20 a week or $50 a month and really get into the habit of investing. And the one that we really encourage and is so important is making sure that you're making the most out of your company benefits like your 401k. Um, because you really can't beat a company match. Absolutely. So there are these little things that you can start to do to start gaining back that confidence. Well, thank you for sharing that on our podcast because there are things that probably we know, but if you don't do it or you make it a habit, like the coffee every day, for example, you know, listening, someone listening might right now might go, oh my gosh, you're right. I've been meaning to make a change with that. And listening right now might help them make that small change. So listen, your study also uncovered the new trend that you mentioned in terms of digital tools and unbiased human advice by investors. Talk to us about that. Yes, so everyone uh, wants to learn more, and that's really what the digital tools allow. It allows you to learn more on your own. It allows you to understand the power of compounding. That means the interest growing your investments over time. Learn about the value of diversification. Um, And so the digital tools are really a great way to educate. Um, And the robo-advisors and the advent of robo-advising is really about letting technology do what technology does best. It can monitor your portfolio 24 by 7 better. It can help rebalance your portfolio. And even some great algorithms have been uh, created to help give you the power of Wall Street at your fingertips, which is all great. But at some point, life happens. And that's when you need to be able to talk to an unbiased advisor and really bring in the best of both worlds. So that's what we recommend for most people 
is really reach out and use those tools to help you get educated and really get a balanced portfolio. But when you need help, reach out, pick up the phone, and really get the help of an advisor. Yeah, that's great advice. And it sounds like, based on this survey and everything else that you guys know, that Capital One is definitely listening to what investors are looking for. And you're providing the tools and advice that we need to help us reach our financial goals. So let's talk about a brand new investor. How can they get started? Well, I think one of the most important things, especially for a brand new investor, is to recognize, and our survey um, sees that this message is getting out there, that now more than ever, Americans are responsible for their own long-term financial security. So about two-thirds, 65% of non-retired Americans are putting away some portion of their income for retirement. So that message is getting out there. Um, So we need to embrace that and make sure you're not letting the complexity or fear keep you on the side lines. Um, So we want to make sure that you're not being too conservative. um, And especially um, our younger generations, the millennials, who have the longest time to get the benefit of compound investing and growth in the marketplace are participating and making sure that you're in a growth portfolio that will allow you to get the most of um, benefit of long-term investing. So really, really making sure you're participating in the market. Gotcha. That's a great point about millennials. I want to get to that. And and I love that you're sharing all this information because we know that regardless of how you invest, it's certainly wise to do so. Uh, it's great to know that these options are available and the resources are available through Capital One to help us invest smartly. Let's get back to those millennials. And what did your survey find about millennials specifically and how they're thinking about financial planning? Well, you know, I think that is one of the most profound things that we found. Um, And we found in particular uh, that this notion of the American dream, I think there's been this long-held notion that the American dream was about accumulation and always having more than what your parents have. Um, And the millennials told us that's not really how we think about it. Um, And in fact, only 9% of millennials said that that, you know, that was their definition of the American dream. Um, And instead, what they said, that their American dream was about living debt-free, 27%. Um, 25%, their American dream said it was about feeling financially secure. Um, And another 22% said it was about working because they want to um, and not because they had to. So it was really, I think, exciting that um, financial freedom is really personal, and it's about living your hopes and dreams um, and not just about accumulation. Uh, So I think that was one of the most profound findings in the survey um, and that they're redefining what financial freedom and the American dream really is. Sure. Millennials are redefining a lot these days, aren't they? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So tell us, so what would your advice be then for a millennial based on the information that you found in your survey or, or anyone really on why they should start taking action and boosting their retirement investment? So many different things, um, that it, you know, about taking action. So first, our, our recommendation always, the first step is always to make sure that you have an emergency fund and that you have six months of savings stashed away because you never know when a rainy day might happen and you don't want to have to tap into your investments um, at the wrong time in the market. So that's our first step is to, again, make sure you have an emergency fund. Um, the second is to really make sure as you're getting started in your investing journey, that you understand your tolerance for risk, what your time horizon is, and what your objectives are, because you need different um, uh, investments for different goals. So, for example, if one of your goals is to buy your first house, um, you obviously need a pretty conservative uh, portfolio for that because you're going to cash that money out and buy the house. Um, And for retirement, you need more of a growth portfolio because that's really far away and you want the advantage of the compounding interest, et cetera. Um, Once you start investing, you want to make sure you set it and forget it, as we talked about it earlier. Make investing a part of your regular life and not a chore. Make it automatic. Make it, um, and another way uh, people like to say it is pay yourself first. Make sure you take that money out that you almost forget about it, right? It comes straight out of your check um, and it's something that you don't even notice and it goes straight into your investment portfolio. A great tip and an easy tip once you set it up. 
Exactly. Um, the next thing is control what you can control. So, for example, really focus on low-cost investing. One thing that's really popular right now is ETFs, exchange-traded funds. Um, and one of the reasons that is, is it's a passive investment, which means it matches market indexes. It doesn't try to beat the market. Um, and therefore, it is a really low-cost um, investment. Um, and we, the, it's just a really efficient way to invest. Um, and therefore, you're not paying expensive fees in order to try to beat the market. And so it's just a really in- efficient way to invest. And that's really a smart way to invest so that fees aren't eating into your portfolio. Sure. And then finally, understand the important role that advice can play and an advisor can play in helping you to achieve your goals. One of the most important roles they can play is to help you keep on track, um, especially in times of market volatility. We see across all the generations, uh, over two-thirds of all generations want to speak to an advisor during market volatility to help them stay the course and make sure you don't do exactly opposite of what you should do, which is to, you know, sell when the market is low and buy when it's high. So did your study find that millennials in general prefer to invest on their own or with the help of advisors? We found that uh, millennials really like the combination, um, just like most generations, Um, and that is they like to have access to really great intuitive digital tools, but when they want to talk to an advisor, either during times of volatility or when life gets complicated, like they might get an inheritance or they might lose a job or they just might have a question, access to an advisor is really their preference. Wonderful. Now let's talk about those individuals that choose to invest on their own, because I know there is a certain amount of people that do just that. Yes. Give us some tips, Yvette, on on what they should look out for, maybe some mistakes they might make if they're solely advising, I'm sorry, investing on their own. Yeah, I think one of the things that um, folks should always keep an eye on is, you know, if something is uh, too good to be true, it usually is, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a general so, rule, yes. That is always an important general rule. And, you know, I always uh, am a big believer in um, the Warren Buffett rule, and that is to invest in things you know. Um, it's a very important rule um, as opposed to investing in gimmicks, which ultimately you usually run their course. Um, So what I like about investing in what you know is that means you're learning, right? You're investing in fundamentals. You, you know, you're a nurse, so you understand some dynamics around how hospitals or drugs work. So you want to learn and you want to research. So you sign up for a self-directed account, you do research um, through the research center, and you want to invest in a few stocks in the healthcare industry. That makes makes a lot of sense. So stay close to what you know, because you'll get smarter, you'll learn more about your industry. And that's a really great way just to get smarter about, you know, investing. But do that as a small part of your portfolio with the primary goal of getting smarter about investing, but always keep the main portion of your portfolio in a diversified, low cost, efficient portfolio. Really, really great tips, Yvette. So, I mean, all of these tips have been extremely helpful for anyone listening. So where can listeners find more information on investing wisely and retirement investment planning? Well, I would, all, of course, recommend that you spend lots of time on Capital One, Capital uh, One Investing. Investing. Com, yes. dot com. We have a lot of great information. Um, the other thing uh, that I think is always important is if you are um, interacting with a uh, advisor, there is a great site on FINRA, F-I-N-R-A, where you can um, do a broker check um, to see if there are any um, violations or issues with the advisor that you're working with. And that's always important to do as well. Okay, wonderful. Yvette, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today on The Bistro. It's been wonderful. These are awesome tips. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, long-term financial planning is one of those things we should all do. And we should revisit these as our as we navigate through the different stages of life. We want to thank you again for all of this great information. And to our listeners, we hope that we've shared some new insight on investing. And if so, let us know. We'd love your feedback. The Better Business Bureau is deeply committed to building and advancing a better marketplace, a trusted marketplace for all because... 
Trust always matters. For the Better Business Bureau and as your host of The Bistro, I'm Elena Spinola, and I thank you for listening, and I encourage you once again to give us your feedback on this episode. Until next time, it's been my pleasure discussing better business with you. You just enjoyed The Bistro Podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.